Hello, welcome to the presentation about 3D Arbitrary Sliding Direction Tutorial. My name is Marina Trevisoli and I will guide you through the steps of this tutorial. So to get started, let's work initially on the model setup by creating a new model under Plexus LE Manager. You can pick here the module, Slope Stability. We are handling a 3D case. Unit is set as matrix, and the slip direction is set as multiply orientations. This is the first differentiator in terms of handling a uh, common uh, approach in terms of left and right and right to left. Let's la name our model and click OK. So this is the CAD window of Plexus 3D LE. It's a similar structure in terms of workflow related to the 2D approach. But here we need to enter the geometry in terms of the use of regions and surfaces. So the region in this case is used to delimitate the model extent. So we can come here under geometry, region properties, and by default, we have already the region 1 set. We need to add the coordinates of the region. And remembering, remembering that the region has only x and y coordinates. So if you click here under new polygon and just paste the, paste the coordinates available under the tutorial, we'll click OK. OK. And you see here now uh, the region set. Remember that the region respects uh, in terms of the, the Z elevation here, uh, the extents of top and bottom surface using the model. The next step is defining the surfaces of the model. In this case, we are handling a layered cake approach, which means that between two surfaces, we'll have one material. And we can come here under geometry, surfaces, and by default, we also have surface 1 and surface 2 in Plexus 3D LE. Initially, it's set as constant, so a constant elevation, as we can see. But we can click on surface 1 initially. Come here under property. We can see that, uh, indeed, this is a constant definition and the elevation is 0 uh, meters. Right? Uh, we, we just keep the surface 1 as it is, because it's the bottom. Uh, surface of our model and we will now adjust the surface 2. So we can click on surface 2 properties and in for this surface 2 we are not considering a constant but a grid surface. Okay. Uh, in order to have a grid we can paste the data grid uh, related to the coordinates of such grid from a different uh, file format. So we, can, we have several options here, but base data grid is one of them. I can click on it, and I will have here uh, import uh, from file. Okay, I'll click on import from, from file, and then I need to uh, look for the, the file I would like to, to have as representative of my grid. In this case, if you have Plexus LE Connect Edition version 21 installed on your computer, which is the current uh, version used for this tutorial. We'll have here the tutorials folder and I will look for a grid that uses CSV format. Okay, The name of this grid is called Slope Stability Tutorial 3D Arbitrary Sliding Direction. Here it is. I can double click and then I can see here the coordinates related to the grid imported. I'll click OK, and the software will ask if I want to keep the existing grid points that we had by default, right? Uh, in that sense, I will click on No, because I want to change all the grids. OK, and now we can see 
the grid imported in our model. Sounds as we were expecting. Good. The next step here now uh, is in terms of specifying the analysis settings, right? So we can come here under model settings and then we will define here uh, what will be the search method. And there are several um, correlations with what has been used for 2D. So we can pick here entry and exit. And this is something, this is a search method very common on the 2D approach. And we'll proceed here with the calculation method. The calculation will select degree from Fredland and also Bishop Simplified. We'll click here, Bishop Simplified, I can include both of them. Additionally, as we are handling a um, multiplier orientations, uh, as, as, we, as it's set for the slip direction, we have this new tab here called Orientation Analysis. Okay, the Orientation Analysis tab is used to define uh, the plane and also the angulation referring to these uh, arbitrary sliding direction. So I'll just consider as the, the specified slip direction based on the coordinates we have under the tutorial. So 26, minus 4, 32, and here 32. Okay. I can also adjust here under the rotation angles related to slip direction. You can see that the plane is located based on the coordinates, right? And basically I can define the different uh, angles that this plane will be uh, rotated, okay, or oriented. Uh, we can pick different methods. So the brute force method is the one that we need to define the, the angles or Gauss method, we just, it's an automatic, automatic approach. We just let the software run and tell us what would be the critical value. In this case, I'm using the brute force. And uh, in that sense, I will just add a regular spacing of the angles, starting by minus 10 degrees, ending at 10, and keeping these increments as default. So I'll click here, and we can see that now we have these four additional planes that are spaced based on the angles defined here. Okay, good. Uh, the next part is under the conversions. We need to adjust some of the conversion settings. In terms of column resolution, we are switching the numbers of rows and slides to a more refined grid surface. So I'm setting here as 80 and 80, and you see that the grid surface changed to a more refined condition. The tolerance we are keeping as default, and maximum number of interactions also 50. Good. I'll click OK. And now the next step is defining the material properties. In this case, as you can imagine, we have only two surfaces and one region for the entire model. So we will apply just one material layer. Let's go to the materials manager, click on new, and we'll create a material called soil using more coulomb. We could also pick other options here based on the different uh, constitutive models available. I'll click OK, and I'll set here the cohesion, friction angle, and also the unit weight. Okay, okay. After doing this, we can return here to materials, access the material layers dialog, and apply the soil property to region one. Layer one is basically uh, the layer obtained from surface two and surface one. Okay. We click OK. This is what we should expect as final result. And before we run our analysis, we also need to set here the entry and exit uh, 
search method. Now, let's not forget about this. So we can come here under slips, entry and exit. You can switch to the 2D view because it's easier to set the location. And we'll respect here the coordinates of our tutorial. So 14, 21, set 6 as increment. And here 2, 8, and 6. So based on the inputs, you can see this red line here defining the entry range and the exit range as well. We'll now also adjust the aspect radio here just adding the radius increment as 6 as well and we'll add here the values of 0.8 to influence on the size and extent of the sliding mass so the software will run the analysis for each of, considering each of these aspect radios. Okay, just delete the one and that's it. Click OK. I can return to the 3D view and the model is set exactly as we were expecting. So we have this plane that you run the 3D limit equilibrium analysis, but also Plexus 3D LE will run as the same evaluation to this angle, this angle, and the other two to make sure we'll be able to identify the critical scenario in terms of factor of safety. Let's now run our model. We can click here under Analyze or under Solve Analyze as well. We'll save our model. And the Plexus LE slope stability solver will open up. We can keep up with the evaluation. So direction 5 or 5, 10 degrees, that's it. Solved, finish. We can then click here on visualize results. As we can see, the final result relates to a factor of safety of 1.4 and along the minus, minus 5 uh, degree sliding direction angle for the Glee method. Okay, uh, we can see here and also we can see under the slopes information if you if you want what what was the critical ellipsoid, ellipsoid aspect radio used and also here the sliding direction angle considered as the critical one. Okay, so this is one of the outputs obtained when handling with arbitrary sliding direction. One additional result would be mapping the factor of safety versus the sliding direction angle uh, for different calculation methods. How could we do this? So if we access here graphs, we have the option factor of safety ver versus sliding direction angle. And in that sense, uh, was, as we have here five points, right, uh, to each of the planes used, we can observe that the minimum value is actually related to minus five degrees, and the maximum value would be the one related to 10 degrees, okay? So the opposite direction.